Certainly a new band, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's gone on away from the from the old Sabbath days into a, a new era of the more the nineties sort of sound. It's like a, still retaining the same sound, but sort of updating it more, you know, with sort of the things we're doing now. No, I've been around. I've been. I haven't. Um, I've been done a lot of session work and worked with various people, but uh, Sabbath is my first big project. I'm really proud that it is. It's. Uh, a nice feeling. I like you. I, I know what you're saying. People have compared me with Ronnie James Dio, but to be perfectly honest, if you got the the material that I'm doing and put it along side by side to Ronnie, it sounds totally different. It's just that I have that sort of power in my voice that Ronnie has. I admire him as a vocalist, but um, I admire uh, a few people in this business. At the end of the day, I'm Tony Martin. As soon as I open my mouth, that's how what I sound like, for better or for worse. Which, which, which rainbow is this one? <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Because, because of uh, the, the split in Deep Purple. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Probably for the money then, that's probably why he's doing it, is it? Perhaps we'll have to ask him. Uh, I don't know. Your dear friend like he's my dear friend, yeah. Well, whatever he just chooses to do. Good luck to him, really. I mean, his solo career doesn't seem to have uh, done too much lately. So. Um, but uh, when he left Rainbow, I don't think it was under very good circumstances. So they'd have to repair a lot of damage before that would be successful again, I think. So uh, I hope they don't ask me, because the answer is definitely no. Headless Cross. Do you want to yeah. tell him? Shall I tell him? Tell him then. All right, I'll tell him. Um, Headless Cross is based on a story um, on, on a village that uh, Tony and I live near. I actually lived there for a couple of years. Uh, the story is basically about the people and their belief in the cross. They used to hang crosses in the houses and around the neck and erect big crosses and stuff. Because they all died of a disease. We called it the plague. And so the, the story is based on their belief and uh, the disease that killed them all. But then every song on the album is a different story about different things. Mainly to do with history, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Neil will know, he's the, he's the, he's the one who follows. <laughs> Well, I try and keep in touch with what's going on, but Good really enough. not that many. I mean, maybe in a couple of years' time, a band like Gun and maybe FM will have done something with this new album, but there's not a great deal. I mean, I think it's starting to move back to a more English type of sound instead of everything being just like Bon Jovi or the LA bands, but so far, nothing really very exciting. There's talent out there. There's good good players, good musicians out there. I just don't think it's got together in the right mix yet. I mean, there isn't a band that has just quite got all the, the right people in it. Um, the other thing is, uh, there is a limit to what, how fast you can play and how many lyrics you can get into a line and all this sort of stuff. And a lot of bands are turning back to the, uh, dare I say, older style of music in rock, which has got more feel. And that's what's been lacking, I think, in a lot of bands. You mean the 70s? No, I don't mean 70s necessary. I mean, there's been good bands through the 80s. Um, but th there's a, f a feel that has to come from inside you, the way you play. And uh, I think too many people are too technical these days. Either that or they look, they look right and they can't play. <coughs> so many bands seem to concentrate what they look like. And yeah. They forget about the fact that you're supposed to be able to play something as well. You know, It's, it's all very well looking like... Uh, they, a lot of these American bands have got deals because of the way they look. Yeah. And I think it's backfired on them now because they haven't got the, uh, they have to get the producer to do all the work for them. And I mean, when it comes to playing live, they just can't cut it. And they've had to, they've had to cancel their tours. I mean, you have to have a basics to, to, to start playing, otherwise, it's a waste of time. And also, I think that uh, the English scene it tended to get very involved with thrash metal and really playing ultra fast. And, you know, it, most of the audience is not really that into it except the very best bands, I don't know, Metallica or Anthrax or something, and by the time the English bands jumped on that wagon, it was kind of too late, and that's another couple of years lost going down a sidetrack. So mm. now there's a reaction against that, and people are starting to play more normal songs and more blues-influenced stuff, and I think it, it will get better. And maybe next year you'll see some... Well, what's important at the moment, I think, is that um, people get back to songs. This is why I think Black Sabbath have never ceased, they've never failed, because it's, they've been good songs and good hard, heavy stuff, you know. I think it's we don't like them, it's the fact that there's, there's not a lot coming out that's new. 
most of the vendors coming out of there all look the same and all sound the same. You know, it's just a lucky break that, that they can get. You know, and as soon as this one comes out and makes get successful, then there's another hundred to follow the following week, exactly the same, wearing headbands and whatever yeah. else that they do. Like Ian used to do. You yeah, mean just, so. this example is Guns N' Roses. They're coming out well, with success. Yeah, then there'll be a, you, you can guarantee it's, you know, as soon as they hit success, there was another, you know, a hundred bands that's, that's doing the same sort of thing as them and looking the same. It's just that a bit lost, they're wandering around trying to find, you know, what to do. And as soon, as soon as anybody, we've seen it many times, as soon as anybody gets successful, then there's an immediate row of people to follow that are doing the same. What had been going on, like the thrash metal scene in the States, or the very AOR sound, it was back to a more classic, you know, fairly basic, almost Stones-ish type rock. Yeah, you know? yeah. And they, they write some pretty good songs, but I think most of the copy bands that will go, you know, there'll be millions of Guns N' Roses clones that won't be able to write songs. I mean, we're, most of us from Birmingham, Tony and I from Birmingham, Jess from Birmingham, because he spent a lot of his life in Birmingham on occasions. And uh, it's an industrial town, and when you get a, a situation like that where there's hardship and stuff, you tend to get blues come out of it. And uh, situations which make people feel, you know. Um, when you're riding on the back of things, LA I don't see as a situation, a place that you can f get inspiration from. But if you. You know, the blues came out of a lot of hardship, didn't it? Mm. And yeah. it coupled with jazz, which is where Tony got the initial thing from. It's down to the situation, the location, I think. And Birmingham is the ideal place for this sort of music. I think one of the problems is with a lot of the later groups is they haven't actually lived and been brought up, sort of, uh, they've sort of been, been able to come straight out and buy Marshalls and all the guitars and buy all the gear. Yeah. Just go straight into doing a headline show or supporting a headline act, which you couldn't do that years ago. You had to start from the ground and build up, yeah. and you gain experience by doing that, and you gain a lot of other things that, that you just can't get just like that. And that's where it fails a lot with the newer stuff. Yeah, yeah. But not saying we're trying to knock it, but it, but it, that's the way it we've is. We've all got groundwork basically. I mean, we've uh, uh, all done a lot of. We started at the bottom and sort of worked up, and you gather that sort of feel and inspiration from that situation. Yeah, to be honest, um, from my opinion, I don't know what the guys think, but I, I, from my opinion, Sabbath started um, a thing, nobody else was doing this sort of thing at the time, and it, from that has come everything else, um, and it's developed into all sorts of things, but basically, um, it's a belief, it's uh, part of history, really, all that sort of stuff. It's just looking on the dark side of things, it's a different way of looking at it. And whatever has come off that has actually been a stem. I don't think it's responsible for anything at all. Under on on the heavy scene. Not really, I, I think it's... Um, I've worked Are with a lot of different it? people. <laughs> well, I've worked with a lot of t different people, but I mean, I've always been searching for a band that I could stay with. And um, without risk of you know tempting fate too much, let's hope that this is the one, because uh, we've been talking about doing this for many years now. I'm just lucky, I mean drummers can play with a lot of different people anyway, I mean I think a guitar player or singer is possibly, uh, has to be a little bit more selective. Drummers and bass players, particularly Neil and I have worked on a lot of many, many different records, but I mean, you know, it's just nice to get asked to do all these different things. But to be part of a band is something special, and it doesn't come round very often in your life to be part of a really successful band that works well together as a unit which is something I've always been looking for. And I've found it a couple of times, but unfortunately the other members of the bands have been either very difficult to work with or superstars, and I don't like working with superstars particularly. So I made a mistake joining Black Sabbath, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, we're Black Sabbath. All the guys here. like all to right. wish you all the best.